ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon and uh, welcome to Asia House. Uh, my name is Sumi, Sumi Ghosh, um, and uh, I run the uh, cultural program here, um, which I, I know I can see most of you know Asia House very well, but just uh, there are one or two people who are new to us. And just to let you know, Asia House is a business and cultural organization, uh, and uh, we've uh, been around for 14 years, and our main mission is to build dynamic links uh, with Asia. Uh, for us, Asia means 40 countries from uh, Iran in the West right the way through to the Pacific, uh, Japan and China. And obviously a big part of what we do in cultural terms and in business terms uh, is uh, look at Britain's relationship with India. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why it's quite thrilling actually to have a, a director uh, this evening or this afternoon, James Ivory, uh, whose work uh, for 10 or more years was very much about uh, uh, sort of British uh, and Indian or European and Indian intermingling and interrelationships. Um, this today is the first full Saturday of our new exhibition, which is on downstairs at the moment. So if you haven't been, do please have a look at it. And the exhibition is called The Tiger in Asian Art. And this is one of, this is one of the things that led us to this actual event this afternoon. Uh, because James Ivory has lent us one of his uh, pictures, his Indian miniature paintings, um, to that exhibition. And from that, we uh, had a, a conversation with uh, Francesca Galloway, who I think might be here somewhere. Is she, is she? Um, and uh, there is an exhibition on uh, at the Francesca Galloway Gallery in, uh, in Dover Street uh, of James Ivory's uh, collection of paintings. <coughs> Um, and uh, James had the idea to show his film, uh, Hullabaloo over Georgie and Bonnie's Pictures, uh, which is very much about, I won't say any more because you're about to introduce the film, but th what we're going to do basically this afternoon is uh, uh, Jim's going to introduce the film in a minute, we're going to show the film, and I always warn people when they come to Asia House to see a film, say this is not a cinema, uh, it's not uh, the same experience as being in a cinema, we we're using a fairly primitive digital projector to project a DVD, so if there are any cineasts here, then you're not going to get the same experience, but what you will get uh, today is after the film, uh, tea, uh, which has been provided suitably, actually, when we're talking about uh, Mughal miniatures by a Persian restaurant just up the road, so after the film, we're going to have tea and cake, uh, and then uh, uh, James and I are going to talk about uh, his, uh, his film work and, indeed, his uh, collecting. Uh, so could you join me in welcoming James Ivory? So uh, this film came about in a strange way. It was kind of thought of by Melvin Bragg. And uh, he put it to us uh, at one point, to Ruth Chabala, his mom merchant, and I, uh, the idea of doing a, a film for him, for the South Bank show. But as long as it was on art, it had to be in some way be on art. And uh, that was a pretty big, uh, big field. And uh, we thought about that, and, and uh, uh, it could have been a documentary of, about works of art, it could have been, he didn't say. It was up to us to come up with a, an idea. So we thought that since the thing that I, the kind of art that I knew the most about was Indian miniature painting, we would make a film about that. But not about the pictures themselves, though they do figure in this film, but about the, um, about collectors. And uh, the, uh, the way of finding Indian miniatures, for instance, and, and what happens to them, and people's ideas about them in the West, and what should, what should be done with them. Should they be left in India, uh, where a white ant will get at them, and, and they will be rot, they'll rot or be sold or lost or whatever, or should they be taken away to the safety of the DNA, for instance? And those are the sort of um, questions that are posed in this movie, but it's not a serious movie, I have to tell you, it's quite a time. So, let's just start, and uh, in a room of this size, we ought to have a good image, and there we go. So, uh, what we, I was hoping to do is just really uh, keep it fairly open, um, and um, I realise that we haven't completely um, introduced you, James, and I don't want to go into a long kind of biography. Uh, suffice it to say that you've been making films 
uh, now for 50 years. Is that right? It's just over 50 years. More. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and um, it was uh, people know you for merchant ivory productions and this this, this great trinity of of, of uh, yourself, Ishmael Merchant, who sadly died five years ago, and Ruth Pro Jabbar. Uh, and I, I guess that we know, many people know Merchant Ivory for the, the films after the India period, for the, the, those uh, How's End or, or The Remains of the Day. But in the context of our talk now, I didn't want us to kind of attempt to cover absolutely everything. I, I really was interested in focusing on your work in India. Uh, and in the context of your collecting and being a collector, it was, the, it was your first encounter with Indian miniatures that led you to making the documentary The Sword and the Flute. Hmm. And I wondered if you could start telling us a bit about that when you first came across uh, Indian painting. Well, I, 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 uh, I knew nothing about India at all. My only, uh, absolutely nothing. I mean, I just started from total ignorance. Um, and. I had made this film, my very first film was a film I made in Venice. Uh, and it was a, a film that was my master's thesis at the Department of Cinema at the University of Southern California. And as I was finishing that up, and of course I, it, uh, it, all, it was a film which also had a lot to do with the Venetian art. As I was finishing it up, I, I I wanted to, uh, I had a desire to own a Canaletto print, if I could, if I could find an a, a Canaletto print. And, and uh, one of my teachers at SC said that there was a very good print dealer in San Francisco uh, who did deal in, uh, uh, in that kind of thing, uh, uh, old master prints and so forth. And I was going to San Francisco, so I went in to see him. And what, the, what my teacher didn't know was that this dealer named Raymond Lewis was also probably at that time the only, the only art dealer in the United States that, that dealt, uh, that sold Indian miniature paintings, Indian and Persian. And I went there to find the Canaletto etching. And in fact, what I found was spread out all, all, over all these tables in his gallery for a previous customer about a hundred miniatures, just, and he hadn't had time to put them away. And uh, here were all these uh, wonderful, uh, you know, miniatures this size, with beautiful colors and, and totally unknown scenes. Some of them wonderfully well done, some less well done, some terribly interesting ones, and some which didn't interest me at all, which I had to sort of get used to to develop a taste for, that kind of thing. And that's how I discovered India, was through those miniatures in that gallery. And, and you, you were a film student at the And time. I, was a, I, was, I was a film student, and as I say, I'd made this other film uh, in Venice. And just, and it, which had come out well. It was almost done, but not quite. And then it turned out well, and, and uh, I thought, well, uh, I don't know anything about the, the, these, uh, this form of art, but it looks very interesting, and why don't I make a film about that? And um, I don't know what gave me the nerve to jump in like that, but I did. And, uh, so, and that's sent me on my yeah, trip, yeah. too. I, I was wondering whether when you first saw those pictures in Ray Lewis's, this was in San Francisco. In San Francisco, yeah. And I was wondering whether, you know, when you looked at them, you were already looking with the eye of a filmmaker as you were a film student. <sighs> it's hard to say. I mean, I'd had a, I'd had a, uh, certainly a success with the, uh, uh, I'd showed a lot of Venetian drawings and, and uh, uh, etchings by Whistler and people like that, and I knew how well, uh, if you did uh, close-ups of some of those uh, really quite small works of art, you would get a, a powerful impression on the screen. And uh, so I knew at once that uh, with some of these images in the Indian miniatures that I would also get a, a very, there would be a strong image. And uh, I think that attracted me right away. And, and uh, I, I might not have, I mean, had I not had the prior, prior, prior experience, I don't know if I would have been. And there are those two uh, beautiful passages in the, in the film we've just seen where, where you really give them quite a long time with the, the camera wandering over the details right. of the pictures. And right. That's, uh, that was quite a striking part of the yeah. film, I thought. Yeah. 
And I, I noticed that um, with, with the, uh, your, your pictures of the, the gallery at the moment, um, you know, they're all, they're all laid out and, and displayed beautifully. And, you know, they are the kind of pictures that have a sort of strong narrative to them. You know, you, your eye does wander mm. across looking at the little details. Mm. Mm. Um, and that's not, not necessarily something you find in Canaletto, where you've got these sort of topographical views, although I think the London scenes do have little right. vignettes in Yes, they so do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, I didn't know what those scenes meant when I saw them. I had yeah. no idea uh, what... Uh, uh, because a great many Indian miniatures are, are uh, on Hindu mythology and... and, uh, and, and uh, of course, the Mughal ones are easier to to figure out because they are they're more secular and and uh, they tended to be uh, portraits of uh, or scenes of great events that had happened and and you you understood that. But with the with the um, Hindu ones, you didn't you didn't really know where how to get hold of it. And and, and, and in fact, uh, I only am <laughs> just finding out. A lot of the, a lot of the, the, uh, the background of some of those pictures, I never ever really discovered until the catalog for this, for, the, for, the, for Francesca's show. So, um, uh, and I was surprised at some of it. Uh, and did you, <laughs> so, after all these years? Yeah, you, I mean, I, 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 my own laziness didn't surprise me. I, I know I'm lazy, but. Uh, but the other people would know everything, uh, uh, exactly what things meant. But yeah. you had enough to convince us when you made the sword and the flute. What? Is when, it? when you made the sword and the flute, you, you knew enough to make a film that we didn't think you didn't know. I um, want to just point out for people who don't know, I know it's, this is a, a nice kind of group where we all know each other, but those of you who don't know, this is Robert Skelton, who is one of the great scholars of Indian painting, I think it's fair. Uh, we're we're need to, before, when and introduced this film, we thought, as he knows all about the subject. So the, if you well, didn't hear you know, that's the what yeah. That's called the magic of movie making or something? <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what I've been doing all my life, is fooling people. <laughs> but you, didn't, you haven't made that many documentaries after that. I mean, that no, that, I made, well, I made, uh, then uh, those two films, the Venice film and The Sword and the Flute, uh, were seen by the Asia Society in New York, and they got the idea of, of uh, sending me off to Delhi to do a sort of portrait of the city of Delhi in time, so starting with its origins and then its sort of mythological past, and coming on down right through the uh, right through the Indian Mutiny in 1857 and and a bit beyond, and into, well, and certainly into modern times. And um, so I went to make that, and that was really based on, on those other two films, I mean, their, their expectations. And, uh, and it was a kind of portrait of the city. And this, this is the film, The Delhi Way? The Delhi Way, yeah. That was the third documentary I made. And that also used works of art, uh, partly to, I mean, there's there an awful lot of live footage and, and uh, uh, old photographs and maps and all sorts of things. But, um, and had you, or by that time, had you already bought any pictures from Ray Lewis, or did you buy? Oh, your I bought. I, that started on the first day. Uh, I just I saw all these things; and they were relatively inexpensive, and I thought I must I just have to have uh, some of these. And then I bought a pair on the first day, or, or at least I said I was going to, and I did. And were they wrapped in red cloth, as we saw? In no, the no, <laughs> no. That's the way it really looked. But the, the red bundles—that is really, truly the way. I mean, we had to reproduce that for the film, but that's the way you often were presented with bundles of miniatures. And I don't know why the color red. There probably is some reason for that. 